Hello everybody, welcome to our second Vigor map tutorial and welcome to the small island of Battery. Battery is the smallest map in Vigor. It's got a lobby of 8 to 10 people, sometimes even only 7 or 6 people. And it is the only map that has two versions. You have the dry version, Draug, and the snow version, Snow Deck. Now, these maps are completely identical. The only difference is that one has locked exits and the other one has open exits. The fact that one has locked exits will make a difference in the type of players you encounter on these lobbies, but we will get into that later in the video. Overall, Battery is a great map for new players to play on and learn how to play Vigor. The snow version is very friendly to new players because it provides exits at any time. The dry version is a little less uh, friendly because you have to work for the exits. You'll understand it by the end of the video how it all comes together. But overall this is a good map for new players to get into and get better at the game actually. With that said, let's get into our first part of the video. And we are going to start with the points of interest that spawn on this map. We have an overview here. As you can see, Bard House spawns mostly mid to south. Container spawns mostly mid to north area. And Time Save spawns in one of the four cannons or at the military base, making actually a straight line across the map. Interesting on this map is that you will always be close to the point of interest even if both of them spawn north and you spawn south You can actually always get to a point of interest really quickly That also means you will rarely be alone at a point of interest Always be ready if you're rushing a point of interest at the start of the game that somebody else is going to be there as well So sometimes it's better to just take a tactical position near a point of interest than actually rushing it and exposing yourself Next up is our loot distribution on this map Unlike Fisk, this map is completely used You will find loot nearly everywhere where you go Military base, motel, firing range all have good loot um, all four of the cannon bunkers you will find stuff in there uh, the area northeast the ponds and logging area you will find chemicals and fertilizer there if you look around a bit car park has cars uh, cars have okay loot i would avoid the car park to be honest because if you set off car alarms there you will definitely get company within 10 15 seconds somebody who wants to come and kill you in the motel area, the cars in that area you can loot safely and have better loot in my opinion. But I would recommend only looting them if you are about to exit. There are two exits there which means you can always escape really quickly if somebody else shows up. Radio Mast is a special area. There's a truck at that uh, building which always has a portable single detector, a transmitter, a jammer and a mortar. It's always there. Every game, every map. So if you spawn near that one, it's definitely worth going there first and picking up those items. The resources that you will find on this map are actually a bit of everything. So this is again good for new players who actually need all kinds of resources. This is also a good map for uh, newer players who want to quickly jump in and out of a map. So you can actually just start a game loot one of these areas and then just go to the nearest exit and leave. This will not give you the highest loot per encounter, but if you are really just gathering resources, this is a nice map to do it. I'm talking about the snow version of course, because the dry version has locked exits. Next up is an overview of the spawn points on this map. You can see that the spawning here is nothing special. It's a bit typical on a lot of maps that you just spawn on the outer edges. Um, uh, if you know that you're only with eight or 10 people, then you're a bit spread out, but there will also always be somebody very close to you. Like in the North area, you can easily just spawn with three people at cannon number four. Uh, firing range, two people. Military base, two to three people easily and like I said it's a small map and you can very quickly get to another point. 
Now that we've done a bit of an overview here, I want to explain why I think this is a good map to learn Vigor on. Because this map, you have the loot everywhere, you are not forced into certain areas here. You can go wherever you want to go. If you want to avoid points of interest, you can avoid them. If you want to avoid other players, you can avoid them. If you want to get into a conflict with other players, it's easy to find other players and get into a conflict. Um, because everything is a bit spread out, it also means that not everybody is going to be in the same area all the time. There's going to be a couple of people north, there's going to be a couple of people south. So unlike Fisk, you don't really need to worry about having the entire lobby concentrated in one small area. You can just stay in one area, stay in the north, encounter two players maybe, have one or two conflicts with those players, and then just grab the loot and go. And you can say, hey, that was a good game, because you will have gotten kills and loot. Unlike Fisk, where you really get forced into a very big uh, hot zone with conflicts. And it may sound a bit like I'm contradicting myself. On one hand I'm saying it's easy to avoid people, on the other hand I'm saying it's easy to find other players. And both are true. If you don't want to be found and nobody's really looking for you, you can get around the map uh, very stealthily. If you do want to find people and they aren't playing very sneaky, then you will find them. And that's why this map is good to learn Vigor. You can learn both ways of playing. You can learn to play stealthy and you can learn to play aggressively on this map. So next up is Signals. Signals has five potential spawning spots on this map. At cannon number one, cannon number three and cannon number four. And either on outpost west or outpost north. Signals will usually be one of the first conflict zones on this map. So if you're spawning north and signals at cannon number 4, you will definitely have 2-3 to three other players there. Important for this map is to know that if somebody uses signals, they can be on top of you in 10, 20, maximum 30 seconds if you're not careful. Um, that's why this map is also very popular for players who like to hunt down other players. Especially the drug version is usually the more aggressive lobby because the exits are closed and you just can't escape them very easily, especially early game. If you haven't looted anything, you can't open the exits. Most of the signals are pretty exposed. The ones at the outposts, you have a little bit of cover when using them, but don't be fooled by that. You're actually a sitting duck if you're in that little bunker area. The only other thing worth mentioning is for uh, the spawn at cannon number one. If you spawn at the military base or at the motel, then you are not per se the closest person to that spawn because it's difficult to get up there. The bunker walls kind of make it hard to get to the signal spawn itself. And people who spawn at the firing range usually have a better chance of getting to signals before you do because they can go up in a straight line and you can't. Next thing I want to talk about is hot zones on this map. I didn't really do that for Fisk because it was very clear where the hot zones were on that map. But for this map I wanted to show where the hot zones are on the early game. Again, it's all done in pain, so it's just red circles. But as you can see, cannon number 4, firing range, military base, car park area are usually some of the first places where there will be fighting going on. It always depends a bit on where signals and other points of interest spawn. Radio Mast is also one where fighting happens very often early game because of that truck that spawns there with uh, the portable signal detector in it. So if you know that these are a bit of the hot zones and you want to avoid them, with this information you know you can avoid them. If you spawn up north don't go straight for that little red house because you're not going to be the only one. You, you're better off going uh, past the road straight to cannon number three maybe get some loot there and then see what's left where you can pick up. If you are looking for a fight that's where you need to go. 
go to one of these areas, you will definitely find other players to fight. Getting around on this map is also easy because there are no limitations. The only real limitations are these blue lines that I put up and those are the bunker walls that I was talking about earlier. That you can't get up there. So that's the only disadvantage is that you're on the north to northeast side of these lines and other players are on the southwest side of these lines because they have the high ground and you can't get to them straight away. These are also the sides where the bunker entrances are. Other than that, you can go everywhere, anywhere on this map that you want to go. Just be careful if you are on the inside of these bunkers because that's the only place where you can get bottleneck because you only have two ways to get out of there. And because you can move wherever you want to move on this map, this is also the map that will teach you to think and act more dynamically in vigor because you can adjust yourself to the situations that are happening around you. And there will be a lot of situations happening around you. There will be fighting in different directions. There will be points of interest that are being uh, hit container that's unlocked, safe that's unlocked, and you will have to choose where to go and more importantly, where not to go. Last part we're going to talk about are the exits, of course. Now on Snow Decked, there's not really an issue. You can exit everywhere any anytime you want. The drug version is a completely different story. All of the exits are closed except for the one southeast. Southeast with the red arrow, uh, 9 out of 10 times there's going to be a camper there. It is the least favorable exit to go to. So we're going to look a bit at the other exits, see which ones are better for you. I'm going to start with the ones I've marked with a blue arrow. All the way up north we have the one um, on the little cliff. That costs 20 wire to open. It's probably the cheapest and easiest exit to open up. Wire will be plentiful on this map and you will get 20 wire very quickly. It's also a very safe exit, not a lot of places where a camper can hide and that's actually one of my favorite exits to use. Second one I marked with a blue arrow is the one northeast, it's the boat, it takes two electronics to open. Electronics easy to find in cars, but of course looting cars always the risk versus reward situation, but two isn't that bad. It's my second favorite exit to use. If for some reason you can't get to these exits, then you will have to focus on one of the two docks. Now the docks, both east and west, will cost five fuel to open. Fuel, uh, not that hard to find on this map, you will find fuel laying around everywhere. Uh, as well as finding it in trucks and there are a lot of trucks on this map so normally you should not have problems finding fuel you will have to be careful because both of these locations also are a bit prone to exit campers especially the motel exit campers like to set themselves up between the motel and the one with the red arrow and try to cut you off there just like on Fisk I would recommend planning your exit a bit if you're going to a point of interest Always make sure that after that you start thinking about what exit you want to take. Radiation on this map is actually not a big problem. It's a very small map so you can be all the way up north with radiation coming north and you should still be able to hit the exit at the docks. Going all the way from north to south is a bit more risky. Don't recommend it. Reversed way, same thing. If you're at south and there's an exit camper, don't try to run all the way north if radiation is already crossing the map. Especially not if you have a full backpack and have a stamina penalty. And with that, we are at the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something from this video uh, that will help you in your encounters. Don't forget to leave a like. And uh, if you're looking forward to the next video, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next video. Bye!